you. I want to do an operational and safety overview video on our 35 horsepower HD Big Bulb Yamma Mama. It is a large high output power washer so respect the power, right? Uh, the first part of this video I want to cover safety and how important it is. Always wear your per personal protective equipment, PPE, and the recommended PPE for this equipment is heavy duty gloves, glasses, or a face shield, and or a face shield, uh, maybe hard hat if you're in that kind of an area, and uh, some sort of boot protection and, and good heavy duty clothes. Some people wear uh, rain protection, which is fine because you're going to get wet when you're washing. You get splash back on you. We have a full safety operational sheets that come with your machine. So I want to take it from step one, from receiving your equipment. We're going to assume you've received your equipment off the tow truck that's delivered off of the semi. When you first get it, look over for any scratches or damage. It's really rare, especially when we ship on our own contract carrier. Okay, so, so take a look around. We have very, very little damage on our equipment. Our equipment costs a little more to ship, but that way we ensure you get a piece of equipment that's not upside down like FedEx, sorry FedEx, or one of those common carriers will do. We just got it. We got to really be careful with uh, how we ship. That's why we like to pay a little more for a freight company. We charge a little more, but that way it shows up one piece. So after it comes off the tow truck and on the ground, take a good look at it. If you see some damage, take a picture of it and note it but we don't ship them damaged. We'll get people call here and say, why'd you ship it damaged? Well, I, you gotta appreciate that. We're not gonna ship them out damaged, okay? It's not what we do. It's not what we've done for our 30 years of building these units. We, we, we've got a good system down, a good process for that. So take a look around. Secondly, um, make sure that your hitch is the right hitch ball size. Now write in your paperwork in here, Take your paperwork out. This has what's called a bill of lading. Now, technically and legally, once we ship to the carrier, he's the carrier, it's your property. So, once we've taken this to the dock and they've signed it off, this legal document that controls all freight, it's called a bill of lading, and how it's shipped, once this goes on a truck, Technically, it's yours. You might want to get some insurance on it from before it even leaves here. So you might want to think about that. So um, we, we have that in the, how to receive. You might want to consider some insurance. Uh, okay, so that step one is to pull out and review your high pressure wash equipment. Uh, forms. Take a look at them. Uh, it's a good idea to sign them. Have any employees sign them. If you want, you can send them back to us. We'll, th we'll put them on our Google Docs. Okay? So we send these with every machine. Uh, there's usually a little uh, calendar or something like that in, in with this equipment. There's also an equipment manual and a product overview manual. So this, this tells what to look for, the pre-setup, before you just tear into the machine, okay? Tear into the machine, okay. We'll, we'll, I'll hustle here. So familiar, familiarize yourself with the equipment. That's what I'm going to do with you. Review all safety and operations. Wear your uh, personal protective equipment. Sign off on all safety sheets. We went over that. Review, review all equipment on the trailer for any potential problems. I mean, and always check your equipment out. See if the lug nuts are tight. We, we checked them. I looked on them. They're marked. So we, we uh, check them here. Structural damage. No loose parts. Um, so you're responsible for the operation of, of the uh, equipment. Okay, here's some service updates that we'll go over in a minute. But I'm just going to do an overview um, on this. So we're going to start with the front again. Now this has to be 2 and 5 sixteenths. You can change this to a D-ring or 2 inch. Adjust this so your, your hauling height's good. 
we'll just kind of we'll do a walk around here still. Okay, you got a throttle on the 35 horse. When you start it, you want your throttle down. We're going to run this in the next video. And you want to have your thermostat and your temperature gauge in the off position. You can come on over and we'll show that. Off and off. So the 35, you can warm this engine up and then crank it up and then turn on your thermostat. Once, once it's revved up, then you can turn it on. You got your large battery box over here. Fuel, fuel system. This is your fuel filter. This gives your spark inside the uh, burner here. Fuel pump. Fuel motor. Rarely do we have problems in this. This is a big, nice quality Wayne there. Wayne and Beckett, they're both great. <coughs> Excuse me. Fuel cutoff solenoid right here. When you let go of that trigger, it shuts that fuel off. That's what it's supposed to do, right? So always check to make sure it's burning good. We'll kind of do a little walk around, then we'll... Detergent tank. I get a lot of questions about how to mix the detergent. Generally, one, one gallon of your concentrate degreaser, maybe a half gallon of Dawn, and then adjust. We're going to show the three different ways to apply soap, and that's one of them. So that's your soap container. Got your tank. Uh, I'm just kind of going around making sure the pins are in on this ladder rack. When we ship out, this right here is your uh, extension one. Uh, fast drain. You can see that? Just up and down, man. You're, you know, you're good to go. Don't go down the freeway or the interstate with this open. People will be calling you and waving you down. Who knows, they'll think you're dumping nuclear waste. I haven't had that happen. I've had other people happen too. Okay, on off on these valves, that's in the on position. That's in the off position. We'll go over start up on the video here in just a sec. Make sure your surface cleaner is strapped down. Some, some machines don't get surface cleaner. This one does. We got, it, we got it bolted down here in the front through a nice piece of metal and a strap. Make sure that's all on there. This right here is strapped in. But if you're going down the road, you'll want to take that off. Right here, you want a quick couple of that offset in the back of your truck, okay? Or van, whatever you're using. And then you've got your valve to turn that on and off. We're just doing a walk around. Kind of taking it easy at first. Got the sun coming out. Look at that. Okay. One question a lot of guys have got is on the water tank. I get excited even, even after all these years. All right. Water tank. Right here. It's real important. Look at the valves. Look at this arrow. That's pointing from the tank to the machine. So you know you're, you're flowing this way. You're on. You go this way. You're on antifreeze. That's to flood the system with the antifreeze. This is on and off. There's off against the grain, on with the grain. So that's feeding water up into the pump, up into your filters up here. Here's your dual filters. Again, check your fluid fluids. <clears throat> I'm gonna get a little cup of coffee. Take a look at your pump oil, make sure it's clean and not turning milky. Right here, you got a nice sight glass right there. And uh, next video, we'll go ahead and fire this up with the boys. We'll clean our truck. It needs cleaning. Okay, in this video, we're getting ready to operate the equipment. First things first, make sure that if, if you've got the trailer unhooked and you've got a lot of water in it, make sure you block the tires or leave it hooked to your, tra or hooked to your trailer. Okay, just some basic stuff. Make sure you got water in it. Believe it or not, I get a couple of calls a year <laughs> going, I don't have any water. The other calls I get are they don't know how to run these valves, which we went over. Make sure you're onto the water position and that this valve's on. Thirdly, if you ran it dry and shut it off, or if you ever run it dry, sometimes you got to re reprime the pump. Doesn't happen very often, but once in a blue moon, you have to run the equipment and take off this little primer valve, which you can also use as a blowout in the winter when we winterize. And you just turn around or you can use a screwdriver until the water comes out. That'll let the air out of the pump. You don't want to capitate the pump too much. They're pretty tough pumps. Best I've ever seen. I want to take a quick peek at these filters. I know this machine's shipping. 
It's brand new. We've tested it. Matter of fact, it's ready for delivery. Lori told me better make an operational video on all these. I said, well, I, I do. And she goes, no, they're sales videos. I've run the equipment quite a few. I think I got my 10,000 hours in. Okay, so I'm just taking a look at the inside of this. This is really clean. You got a little bit of stuff right there, but it's not bad. But I don't see any rocks or anything in the bottom of that. That's pretty nice. Make sure your seal goes back on. Just kind of show a little bit of service here. Pre-service, we'll call it. So I'm making sure that the uh, the filters are clean. I'm going to take this other one off. i got a set feeling this one's going to be on tight. How do I know that? I'm going to need Chris for that. Somebody likes to crank them down. I just knew that one was tight. I don't know what how I... That's how I live, You'll I guess. Need to over -crank these. Chris going to help run the equipment here with me. Those that have been in, no Chris. Him, his dad, and his uncles are engineers. Next generation. Better turn the water back on and bleed it out again. Yep, that's what I'm getting ready to show here. So we're going to go ahead and bleed them out. Let that air out of there. Then tighten them up while they're... Good little lesson on uh, service right there. Let's go ahead and tighten that one up. Okay, make sure you got diesel. Don't intermix. Diesel in the diesel tank and don't use biofuel. It's gummy. Okay, and diesel's just fine. Regular diesel and regular gas is fine. You could use a middle grade or a little better. It's fine. Uh, gas and diesel. I'm going to do my quick walk around that I like to do. I like to make sure the pump cap's tight. I'll, I'll reach in here when it's not hot. Check the belts, they feel good. I'll take a little look, make sure everything's tight. In between major jobs, check for loose bolts and whatnots. I don't I don't catch very many, but there's a million bolts on here. We could miss one, right? I want to make sure we're burning clean up here. You've got a fuel additive when you go to uh, fuel up the gas, I mean the diesel, gas you don't need an additive unless you're gonna store it over winter. And, and keep in mind that new ethanol fuel is really dry. So if you can get non-ethanol fuel, they sell it in parts out here in the West, we can get it. Run regular non-ethanol -ethanol fuel if you, if you can find it. The other fuel's fine, but it will dry it out, okay? They say to use uh, some of the additives on that, maybe like sea foam, okay? On, on the gas side, diesel side, that we, we include this. It's liquid soot, soot remover. <clears throat> I keep my voice. Liquid soot remover that will add one capful every time you fill this tank. That keeps the outside of the coils clean. What keeps the inside of the heating coils clean is cooling it down. Right? You can have the hardest water in the world, but make your guys cool it down. Shut the burner off when you're done, and then let it cool down. Okay? Inside of your toolbox, you got the dual gun units. If you want to keep your pressure up with two guns, you have a 4.5 set of nozzles. Now, that nozzle side size is on the side of the tip here. I want to show this. This is important stuff. Okay. So that's a 25 degree, 25045. We try to nozzle them a little bit bigger rather than run the pump right at red line. Okay, so you got 4.5. Now if you're running single gun, which we'll run first, we've got 9.0s. Inside of here you've got shut off valves that you can use at the end of your, your gun to shut it off and on if you want to change tools out and back. You got your turbo nozzles. Okay. Uh, you do have a fuel filter. This is for the burner filter. Diesel fuel again is kind of nasty. It's, it's a little bit dirty. I like to change that filter out at least two or three times a year. Depending on how much you're going to run it. If you see it smoking a lot, it's usually this filter. So you can call and get those from us or Napa or whoever. It's a Parker Raycor filter. But that keeps all these components nice and clean. 
you want to keep that fuel system running top notch. While I'm looking at it, the battery's right here. It, we do put a deep cycle premium battery in here, but you got to keep it charged in between usages if you're not going to use it on a continuous basis. One of the advantages to the 115 volt system is this battery is charging off of the motor and it also, the battery is just to crank the engine where the 115 volt keeps the burner up. That's why you don't turn the burner on when you start it. You want to rev the engine up so you've got additional watts coming out of the 2000 watt generator here, okay? All right, all right. Let's go ahead, I think we're ready to run. Got these on nice and tight. Got our water on. We're, we're not antifreezing at this point, but we'll show that at the end. Oh yeah, we got a gas valve. Thanks, Brent. Right up here, we do have a gas valve that shows fuel on or off. Again, against the grains off, there's on. So that's that's feeding the uh, motor. I appreciate it, Brent. Uh, one quick tip on service: after five hours, between five and ten hours, change this oil. Use Mobile One. Thanks, Roger, for the tips. Roger from Mobile One and Engineer with. 35 years with Mobile One. We were recommended it before, but we still love Roger. He's an engineer with Mobile One. Run Mobile One. Sure save that motor. The only problems we've ever had with this engine is when they haven't shut the fuel off between jobs and it's sucked that fuel up into the carburetor on there. We like carbureted units. We like fuel injected carbureted. It's easy, simple, starts well. Of course, fuel injected will, but man, that drives the price up. We'll talk about that in another video, right? Okay. These ship with the guns attached. We're not going to use those. You got the extension wand up there. We will use that. We're not going to use those guns. Chris is here. We're going to go ahead. Uh, make sure I like to start it with the with the gun and the trigger pulled. We're going to go around to the front. Now that's in the on position right there. The other. The other hose is in the off position for now. Which nozzle did you put, the nine? Yes. Is it that one of the nines? Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and fire that up. We're gonna run one gun. Chris has got a safety. Always put your tools on the ground because they'll rattle off. Yep, yep, put your toolbox on the ground. The old 35 horse thumper. We're gonna start it. Okay, over here. Now we recommend not starting this above or running it above uh, about 120. Okay, it's kind of like buying a uh, fast car at the car dealership. If you want to run it hotter and you're comfortable with it, it's, it, the machine can handle it. But for safety, we're recommending if you've got a big crew out there, 120. Think about your water heater, 140 is burning. 120 is good. You can run this a lot hotter, but we're, we're giving you a safety warning to not run it hotter. Okay? That makes sense. We want you to be safe again so you can buy more machines, right? Do lots of work, make lots of money, or clean your equipment fast. Stores, malls, I get going. Okay, off, off. Okay, we're going to choke it. Chris, you ready? Green light. Start it with the trigger pulled, 
whether I'm reaching over and turning it on my hand or if you got somebody's helping you okay so single gun that's that's showing that let's let's run the uh, good I like to do a little walk around nice ready to clean I want to show put hook up the other gun we'll show how the soap works keep my voice here I'm gonna go ahead and shut this off then you got to let the pressure off and we're gonna put the downstream injection gun on and show how that works to draw soap out of the tank so I'm gonna show that valve over here Are you ready? So that'll automatically draw soap out when you go to low pressure. So when you got the soap, you're going to let go. So you always want to apply soap bottom up. Now when you want it to bypass soap, you go to high pressure. It's a low pressure draw valve. And rinse top down. There's a little bit of soap left in the 100 foot of hose on this. Bypassing when it's running. But this is a foam cannon, which I love. You can adjust the soap right there. We'll go ahead and hook that up. This is my favorite soap injector. So that applied the soap, and then I just, I just love it. it. It dilutes it, puts it on under high pressure, and you can control your product really good. All right, again, I'm gonna again I'm gonna show the uh, foam cannon, so you can add whatever detergent you're using in this product that you're comfortable with. You know, whether it's Dawn or. Uh, some people use bleach, you know, we're, we're not recommending which detergents in here, but you, some guys use an aluminum brightener, or bleach combo, whatever that secret recipe you're getting from whoever. Okay, on this you've got the dial again, I just kind of wanted to show that. You can increase or decrease how much soap you want it to flow, okay? And then you can adjust this nozzle whether you want to go shaving cream or not. I, I had it doing shaving cream and uh, it's a little windy out here, so we all got shaving cream. It was cool, man, we're all shaving. All right. So I'm gonna set that just barely on. We're gonna quick couple it in and show how this works again. I'll tell Frank to back up. He's on the camera now. Again, following all your safety. Wait, get up. Just, just, do, just do a little bit, Chris. 
Losing my voice, sorry. Woo, look how cool that is. Come on up and show how cool that is. So if you apply soap, scrub with a brush, or whether you just want to spray, spray soap on, then rinse. I mean, look at that. That's one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my 30-something years of this. So that's the foam applicator. You know, that's on the deluxe package, right? Okay, we're gonna go ahead and rinse that off. Meantime, running the machine won't hurt anything because it's, it's got the bypass system on it. All right, let's rinse that off, Chris. And we'll show the... Uh... Good. Okay, the next item I want to show, excuse me, is our roll around sprayer. I also love it. Let's let's go ahead and run the roll around sprayer. So he's shutting the water off to it. The hot, the high pressure. Now we're going to hook up the uh, foam sprayer. This I also love. Now you can put your detergent, of course a lot more of it, X jets the, the, on the end of that, and you can roll this around. You can roll that around the property with your house washing, siding washing, or trucks. And let me show this a little bit. Come on in here, Frank, again. Okay, so you got an off and on valve. Where's that go, Chris? Here we go. That'll draw the soap. Again, you're in line, off. So that feeds the soap. Again, whatever detergent mix you've got in this tank. Okay? Whatever you're comfortable with mixing. Always test before you make some wild concoction, okay? We, we want you to be healthy and safe. Again, so you can buy more equipment. Okay, on the X-Jet nozzle. This, this comes off right here. It's on there pretty good. And you can put a tip in right there. The tips come with it on how much, how far you want to dilute out your product. So right now we would pre-dilute in there. We're running probably without a tip just for demonstration. Again, you got the end of that and that opens and closes. Put on how you want to lay your shaving cream out or foam. Again, I prefer the other one better because it controls the dilution. This one's really great for uh, getting a lot of product out on, on a on a uh, property as well. All right, you're, are you powered up? Is that that one? Okay. I'm gonna turn his water on. Some really cool ways to apply soap or detergent if you use them and you're cleaning your vehicles your trucks whatever and always watch downstream because uh, anything that hits the open waterways you want to make sure you're covered and treating the water if you're washing with a lot of soap or any type of oils always check with your local regs on on open waterways, always protect open waterways. We like fishies and beavers and stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and show how that rinses. So he shut the valve off. Show the burner over here. 
You want to make sure that's burning clean. Go ahead and pull the trigger. That clean that's burning. That's what you want. Love that burner. That's been the best burner we've ever had. All right, next, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and shut this down and when you shut down, you want to turn the burner off and run a little water through it and cool down the heater. I'll do that right now. Again, I want to review the nozzles. When you're running two guns, you want to use these nozzles with this machine. The reason being is all your pressure is generated at the nozzle. Think about that one for a minute. If you don't have a nozzle in there, you have no pr pressure. So we're going to run two gun here for a minute. Yellow is my favorite nozzle color. Now these are your turbo nozzles. I think we've all seen those on videos. You always start those in the down position. So once that's installed, you always start those, you pull the trigger. When I say start, it means pull the trigger in the down position, okay? That one's the grenade, man, that's the bad boy, okay? We'll get through this video. Appreciate the time, appreciate the business. We're here to help, this will save you, okay? I am going to take a look at the size size of that nozzle. 15045. So that's a 45. I'm going to load Frank up here the 45. He's got safety glasses on. They got their gloves. They got some boots. All right. So we're going to run dual gun here. Now I'm going to have Chris pull his gun when I start. Again, you want to start this with the heater in the off position. Okay, I'm going to make sure we're in the off on the burner. Temperature's off. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. It's, it's probably warm. I like to have one gun pulled uh, to start, and then I'm gonna throttle up, then turn the heater on. And you want the throttle up all the way. You want all that juice going to the burner that the generator generates. Okay? We're gonna go ahead and start. Green light, you ready? Okay, when I, before I shut that off, I cooled it down for a minute. So that's the dual gun operation. Again, the single gun operation is the 9.0s. Now, higher elevation, we might go bigger nozzles because you just don't have as much horsepower. But really, really like these. I want to show the shut off. Juan, Chris, let's hook that onto yours. And Frank, let's, while we're doing that, let's unhook the uh, surface cleaner and Show how we can hook that up real quick on the surface cleaner. We do have a spray bar here. I really like these if it's windy like today and you're doing a parking lot. So it'll really control. You hook this on the end of your wand. We'll show that a little bit with this unit here. I like these spray bars. They're real popular. You can put them on a long wand. And you can run it just like that. I'm pretending it's spraying, right? 
Okay. <laughs> Not five o'clock yet. All right. Now inside here, you got an O-ring. Got Steve holding the camera. He knows about all this stuff because he handles all the calls. And you got an O-ring pick, that little black inside. If that's bad, damaged, or comes out, it will spray all over the place. You got extra O-rings with it, with your machine. All right, want well, to make sure the tips are in good. Now, I want to show Chris how he's put on that uh, on and off valve, which is nice. We'll run the surface cleaner with yours, Chris. Let's go ahead and put this one back up. Now, making sure the pressure's off. That's the only way you can get the I'm uncoupling this unit. I'm going to go ahead and have him wind in uh, this other hose so it's not in the way. We'll show operation on the surface cleaner and we're about done. And we'll show how to antifreeze. I'm going to set these tools off of this front here. All right, so the antifreeze, let me move that so we don't have an accident, eh? Okay. So on this surface cleaner, now you want to make sure we actually we shut this valve off that feeds the other hose drill, and this valve's on, so he can start this with either this pulled. You got an extra nozzle for that, just so we can kind of show that we're getting ready to ship this out. Let's. Okay, we'll just we'll just get some new straps. This one's ready to ship out. And again. The gals need a operational video, rather sales video, which I respect that. People get tired of listening to sales pitches, I understand. Let's grab you a nozzle. Again, that's single gun, so it'll be the 9.0s. Excuse me. We'll go ahead and uh, get a nozzle on there. Now, always wear your gloves when you're running this. These valves over here will get hot. You don't want to burn yourself, okay? Again, that's part of why we say 120. 120's a, a great cleaning temperature. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll start this up. 120 is the max. That we recommend you can run it warmer if you're comfortable. All righty, green light, you ready to go? Right there, it goes into bypass when he shuts that off. Here's your little side. Go ahead, I just love running the corner. You also have a nozzle holder right here. Now, this unit's unique, it's got three spray bars underneath it. I'll go ahead and shut this off. Then, we why don't you go ahead and show underneath there how they adjust and how the spray nozzles are underneath. So we relieve the pressure right there. I want to show how this operates just a little bit. I'm going to let your let your uh, hose off right there. So underneath there, you've got the three spray bars and the three spray tips. You can vary cl cleaning performance in a couple of ways. By changing these tips out, you can change cleaning performance, or if they get plugged, it, you'll know it changed it. Excuse me. Also, if you change the angle on these by how fast it, it goes out. We send out a 
diagram on that and these uh, are, are dialed in for each machine we do a really good job on that just kind of want to show that make sure when this is hooked on the back of the trailer that's hooked on good right we don't want surface cleaners bouncing down the free freeway the interstate right okay so next let's show antifreeze and we're done so if it's a, a real cold day you want to dump your water for the most part we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and start the dump action here and then uh, we want to show how to antifreeze come on over here so if this unit was antifreezed which we ship them out basically nine months out of the year is antifreeze we don't in the summertime which it's summer now it's coming on is every component will be antifreeze because when we turn this valve right here we're drawing antifreeze into the system okay then the whole system's antifreeze and once it's the whole system's antifreeze to here we shut the valve back here and that antifreeze is the loop that's the bypass line only takes a second now the hose up here you're gonna need to blow it out we're calling ask Steve for a little connector they'll hook right here to here there's some more phone calls for you Steve he's pretty good about all that so if that was full of antifreeze we would run the whole system right there in that position until antifreeze comes out the end of the wand end of the spray wand or the end of this let go of the wand shut it off shut the engine off that's how it works works great done a million of them that way right it's cold here it's cold mo most of North America that works really really well and then you can recapture the antifreeze just reverse the process turn this tank on to water and then put this up in the antifreeze have somebody help you you know usually you got a helper up inside there and just run it till it clears now you got to check that antifreeze so it doesn't get diluted which it will over time okay works really 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 well really 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 well okay just make sure you're cooling down the unit and, and really do good maintenance on your on your hoses I like to take a I'll shut that off so it's not too noisy I'll take a rag when I'm bringing these in I like to take a rag I might have to take this one back out all the way but I like to take a rag in my hand as you're railing it in and uh, let's go ahead and hook up the surface cleaner and this old girl's ready to young girl is ready to ship out again any questions problems call us we're, we're happy to help you uh, we're here for your support and always follow all the safety again thanks take care